video on using Papyrus and EMF code generation together. So basically generating EMF code from UML models, from Papyrus models in this case. Um, and I've created a small class diagram here. So we have an interface of a patient and uh, a patient record that implements this interface and has some kind of attribute uh, and then has relationships to prescriptions, which is in another package. Uh, and to a record entry, which is then also uh, inherited by a prescription entry, a special one. So this doesn't have to make a lot of sense, but it's simply to, to demonstrate what is possible and what is not possible. Um, so the thing is we have this model, and this is, uh, this is a papyrus model, but if we want to do code generation, we have to, if we want to use EMF, we have to compare this into an eCore model. Uh, and that is actually a different representation. It's not UML, um, and that's why it has. It comes with certain limitations uh, because it simply focuses on different things. It doesn't support everything that UML has. Uh, to start with, what we do when we create an eco model is that we create, uh, we take the UML model as an input, and the thing is, we take the whole model as an input. And in this case, I have a lot of other stuff here. I have my components, I have my use case elements, and so on. And if I just create a new eCore model, it will create it for everything. And in the code generation later on, we'll get classes for nurse, for example, for doctor, and all of the stuff that we don't really want. Uh, so the first thing I do when I do code generation is that I put all my classes, all my associations that I want to have in one sub-model or I create a completely new model. Uh, and in this case, I just say, okay, create submodel of this package here. And once I save this, I will get a new model here. And this is what I will use for code generation. Because if I look in this model now, uh, I see that there's only my class related stuff. Uh, also, the name of the package here and all the sub packages will be used directly for code generation. So in, in this case, patient record will have the fully qualified name pa uh, class elements dot patient record this is important to know so if you want to have a certain package structure later on in your code you need to create it here so for example se dot chalmers dot something else good now i create my model i right click on the uml file and i say new other and then i select emf generator model and I can give it a name um, and then I select as an input I select the UML model and in this case it already has it selected here and I simply press load um, here in this list there are a lot of things that you can uh, you can say that it should be ignored reported processed and so on that it goes basically down to different generating features usually I just skip everything here and here you have to select all the packages that should be generated. So if you have multiple here, it will select it. It will show all of them. And now I click finish. Uh, and I get this new model. Or if I look in my class hierarchy here, uh, in my file hierarchy, I actually see there is an e as and gen model. Uh, and because I'm in the papyrus view, it shows these files under the, uh, the main model which is a little bit annoying because the double click doesn't work. So if I double click on here, it doesn't work. Uh, I have to say right click open or open with the same goes for the gen model. Uh, I can change the view, for example, at the perspective. If I go to the Java plugin development perspective or any other perspective, you will, you will see all the files and then I can also directly open them, for example. Um, but it's, it's, that's a minor thing. If you're aware of it, it's not a problem. So what you see now, if I open also the eCore file, uh, the eCore file is the actual model now. And you see there are packages here, there are classes here, there's also my sub package. Um, so it, it knows a lot of the things that the UML model has as well, but there are certain limitations. For example, uh, if I go back to my class diagram, you can see that here, for example, all my attributes are public and all my operations are public. Here, there is no visibility. So eCore doesn't know visibility. It doesn't has the, have this concept. Therefore, it's not shown here. Uh, and therefore, it's also not generated. But eCore always generates all the attributes as protected and all the operations as public. So that's something to be aware of.
Now if I actually finally want to generate code, I simply right click up here and say generate model code. Uh, if you click on any of the others, it will generate new uh, Eclipse projects which are for editors and so on. So it's not relevant for this case. But just press generate model code uh, and then you see up here I get a lot of packages. And I get mainly my class elements and my sub package, but I also get a lot of other stuff. Um, and if we look into this, you will see that class elements, for example, has my iPatient interface, my patient record, my prescription entry, my record entry as interfaces. So patient record, for example, is an interface in this case. Uh, and this is simply one of the patterns that EMF uses for code generation to separate uh, the interface and separate handwritten and generated code. Um, so you see that for every class it generates an interface and then in the import package it creates an implementation class. So if I go to patient record you have the actual class that is implementing the interface. Uh, and typically you shouldn't really mess around with the interface file. If you want to change anything, change it in the model and regenerate the code. So usually I don't touch this file, I just go in here. Uh, and here you see a, no a number of other things that EMF is using heavily. For example, it, it has uh, well, it has serialization for um, for all model elements basically. So all all classes that are generated have this two string method. Uh, all of them have have different methods for setting, unsetting, uh, and there is a lot of uh, notification. There is a lot of observers in in these classes, which is basically uh, related to EMF being a tooling framework mainly, so that you can register observers on whatever model element you want. Um, but also it creates getters and setters for all my attributes, which is very important. So you don't need to model them. And finally it also uh, creates or generates the operations that I have created. So this re register patient was uh, one of the things that we have added here in my interface. Um, and this is what I will work with. Now if I actually want to work with this, I want to change it. For example, I just do some output here. That's it. Works fine. Now, when I regenerate, so I make some changes, I say generate model code, it regenerates, and my code is gone. And this is the concept of, of protected regions, basically. Right now I didn't protect anything, so it just deletes everything again. Um, if I want to keep this, I have to change the tag up here. So here it says add generated, and I will just say not. As a matter of fact, you can add whatever you want here. As long as there's something, EMF will just not regenerate this. It will leave it as it is. Uh, but yeah, the convention is to put not here. So again, if I do generate model code, now nothing happens here. Now maybe the last step, what happens if I want to make changes? So let's say I want to add an operation here. Well, let's do that. Um, print patient record and now I want to have this in my code what you have to do is you have to recreate your gen model so you have to right click on the model up here and say reload um, and then you go through the wizard again and you press load again uh, and finish and if you go in here you will see that now it has changed so my patient record now has also this print method and now I can just press generate model code again and uh, on the one side it should still keep my old code, it shouldn't do anything with this, but it will also add new things. One word uh, regarding this generation, I would always, I wouldn't do this too often, that you change the model, recreate the gen model, regenerate code, but I would do this in bigger steps and make sure that I have backups in between, for example. Because it's very easy to miss this small knot here and suddenly your half an hour, an hour of work is gone. Uh, so make sure that before you regenerate you have a backup or you committed to a git repository or something like that.